everybody coming at you online with a recording I'm making up on the spot because I made a huge mistake recording our lesson last night for anybody who might have missed youth group because of quarantine guess what the audio wasn't on it was terrible uh, and I felt I did a really good job at the message too so I'm here to give you guys a couple quick announcements and to also give you the five minute rundown of our lesson here's a couple of pieces of information you need to know things like we got stickers that we're making for youth group, for our theme verse, and for our compassion children. That you can pre-order a pack for five dollars to help us save money for paying for our compassion children's needs through the summer months when we're not going to be meeting. That's talking like June, July, August, where there's no Wednesday nights. Uh, we're still going to have some other activities that are going to be really fun. You're going to hear about them in the coming weeks, and you can get this package of stickers and a postcard with all the dates and information of the summer activities that we're going to be doing sent to your house, straight to your address, when you pre-order one of these packs. All you got to do is just give us five bucks, name, address, and look for this the first week school's out. It's going to be awesome. Also, we've got summer camp coming up, and we want to help make it easy for you to get there. So you want to make sure that you sign up for our fundraiser meal serve team. It's going to be after church on April 25th. I'm actually going to be preaching that Sunday, and we're going to have a whole service kind of dedicated to camp, and uh, we're going to serve up an awesome meal afterwards. So you should make it to that. But again, do let us know if you're committing so we can sign you up. One more cool thing I just got to tell you all about real fast. The season two of The Chosen Star debuting, and it is amazing. And if you guys thought that you liked the clips that we showed from season one in our last series, then you need to make sure to download the app. Watch season one and all new episodes completely on there for free. It's just so wonderful that they made it available for you to watch whenever you want without even making up uh, profile no email address or anything that's necessary and it's got a really cool streaming availability to cast it onto your TV from your smart devices but with that being said we are kicking off the first week of a new series called the Christian atheist believing in God but living as if he doesn't exist well what's that look like take a look at this quick promo video Christian atheist take one okay so, you say you're a Christian, so what's your religious background? Uh, yeah. I guess you could say I'm a Christian. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so what does that mean to you? Oh, you know, I try to be a good person and whatnot. You know, I go to church, and the day you're supposed to, I guess, like Easter, Christmas, July 4th, you know, the important ones. Gotcha, so you say you're pretty serious about your faith? Uh, yeah. Sure, I guess you could say that. You know, I, I know what God stands for and whatnot, and I definitely know my beliefs in him, and that he's there for me when I need him and whatnot. The whole thing is uh, pretty telling because if you haven't seen somebody like this on social media, on television, uh, you can probably imagine maybe seeing somebody do this in real life, if not yourself, where we claim the benefits of wanting to say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. It's a nice comfort, you know, or that by claiming that I believe in God will maybe get me something from somebody that they would like me or agree with me on a point. But often we don't really know much about what God is truly like or that we don't really have a real relationship with him. And I just want to break that into three different groups. So you to honestly ask yourself where you are at today, because this is a great starting point for the conversations that we're having this month. You see, the truth is like the guy in the video, many people believe in God, but don't actually know him. There's this Bible verse that's telling us that this is not a new trend. It's not just the last couple of decades. It's been hundreds, no thousands of years as written in the book of Titus. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. This is the equivalent of saying, these people, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. They will say, yeah, yeah, I believe in God, but they don't actually ever do anything to make you believe that that belief is a true belief. I use that word a lot of times. Here. Let me say that one more time. These are the people who say they believe in God, but there's nothing that you see in their lives 
that makes you believe that that belief is something they really hold real, that it affects them. Now, there are many people who may know a thing or two about God. And just to clarify, there's a difference between knowing about somebody and truly knowing someone. And I'll get back to that in just a minute. But while there's people who believe in God and don't know anything, some people can take a step further in the right direction but still not make it there because many people in our country are informed about God, but they haven't been transformed by him. This is when you've gone to church on the right days, you know, Christmas and Easter, you know the stories. You may even have a Bible verse or two, like John 3, 16, memorized, and you know some of the traditional values of God's church, but it doesn't mean that you've accepted them yourself and allowed God to change who you are inside. In the book of Galatians, Paul writes about people who have been introduced to God but they don't change. He says, but now that you know God, or at least rather are known by God, how could you possibly turn back to those weak and miserable forces you were once stuck in? He's talking about addictions and bad habits and hangups. Do you really wish to be enslaved by those things? If you really know God, why are you going back to the things you know that he doesn't want in your life? We could also look at the book of First John, which states it a lot more clearly. We know that we have come to know him. So how do we get to know him? Well, we know that we've made it there, that we know him when we do what? When we keep his commands. We know that we've come to know him when we keep his commands. And his commands influence our life, the steps that we take. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, it's a liar. And the truth is not in that person. So we've definitely established that there are many people who believe in God, but they don't actually know who he is. There are people who know a bit about him, but they don't let the knowledge about them affect the walk of their lives. The final thing is that we should actually be in the circle where we know him intimately and close, and we even serve him wholeheartedly. That's when we start letting the commands affect our lives. And we don't let this all just be head knowledge, but heart knowledge. It moves from one place to another. Because often, a lot of people will find themselves missing heaven by about 18 inches. Think about that for a minute. So for us to know him intimately is to know him closely and know who he really is. And to serve him wholeheartedly means to actually apply what he's asked of us in our lives and have it show out. Because there's no fool in God when it comes to this stuff. Jesus taught in Matthew 7, not everyone who's going to say to him, Lord, Lord, will enter God's kingdom. It's only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. He goes on to explain that there will be lots of people who say, hey, you know, what about the time that I, I went to church as a kid and that, you know, I went on that mission trip with my youth group and I gave money in that Cheska bucket. Doesn't that count for something? Jesus' response is to them plainly, I never knew you away from me. And that's really tough to hear. But when we think about our relationships, we should be made a little bit uncomfortable if they're not up to snuff. If we are not actually having a real relationship, we need to be made uncomfortable with it. And here's a way that I would honestly ask you to test your relationship with God, to figure out which of those circles you're in. The person who knows a little bit about God but doesn't let God transform, or even the person who claims to know God but doesn't even know him at all, I have a litmus test for you here. What name do you call God by? Again, what name do you call God by? That sounds a little weird, but let me explain. In Psalms chapter 9, verse 10, David writes, those who know God's name truly trust in him. And a lot of you guys are just like, God's name's God, right? And it's like, no, actually God has a name. God has many names is what the Bible teaches us. And here's the thing. Depending on the name you use with somebody, I honestly believe that it is a sign of how deep your relationship was with that person is. Let me explain real quick from my own personal life. I get phone calls constantly, every day from solicitors, and I'll, if I dare pick up the phone, it usually begins with, hello, Mr. 
Krell, I want to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. And just immediately hang up. It's like, you don't even know how to say my last name right. And it's just like, I know you don't know me. And I, I know I don't have an extended warranty on my car with you. Um, uh, but there might be people who know a little bit about me and actually know my last name and they know a title I carry. And so they'll call me in public, oh, Pastor Creel or Pastor Kyle. And yes, that would be true that there's some things about me there you've included in that. But if you really knew me, you know a pet peeve is fine. I don't like being called Pastor Kyle or Pastor Creel. It just gets underneath my things. It's just like I, I go by Kyle and I want people to call me Kyle. And the people who actually do call me Kyle, I know that they at least know me. And We've talked before, and we probably share some experiences and life stories, but here's the thing. Uh, we could go one level deeper. There is a group of people who know me more intimately and more close to me and can ask more of me than anybody else, and it's a small select few who call me dad. Let's look to the same thing in our relationship with God. Are you just like a, hey, big guy up in the sky? Uh, I know we don't talk much, but you know, I wonder if you could help me out with something. Or is it just like a generic, um, God, but nothing else? Nothing acknowledging his divinity, heavenly father, maybe even? Almighty God, my Lord, Savior, my strength. All of these things designate a level of intimacy when talking to God. And so I go back to that question, what name do you call God by? I'm not judging you by not using a specific name, but if you don't even talk to God at all, or it's just a generic, um, God, then I think you have your answer here. You may sadly be a Christian atheist, someone you claim to believe in, but live as if they're not really around. And we want to see you guys move beyond that. We want to see you guys take your faith seriously. And so there's some honest questions underneath this video for you to ask yourself, to study, and contemplate on. And uh, we want to hear you take a new step in your faith. We want, we want to uh, see you take it more seriously. And uh, that's going to be knowing God deeper, but it's also going to be living for him in a more real way. And I encourage you guys not to miss out on the rest of the series. We're going to talk about some real applicable ways of how you can live out your faith uh, without being a faker. Because there are people out there who say they believe in God, but they don't really want God to be the boss of their life. Or they believe in God, but they don't really want to listen to his message about you're supposed to forgive others. These are real things that Christians are doing every day, or at least people claiming to be Christians. And that's something we need to correct. So I encourage you to take time with us over the next couple of weeks. And also, if you're ready to take that next step in your faith, remember that baptism night is coming up May 5th. Baptism is a way for you to publicly express an inner commitment and change publicly uh, to everybody that you know in, in a faith community. And it's a great way to do it. Um, so we encourage you to talk with us in the, this coming month about it. You can talk with myself or your small group leader any night. And uh, just uh, as we wrap up, remember, whoever finds God finds life. We'll see you later.